It's the cornerstone of iconic election snacks and iconic catchphrases. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. But democracy is under threat. Better than right, the world. The world <laughs> heading for its 17th straight year of a decline in global freedom as the number of democracies fall and the strength of those democracies falters. We're seeing protesters overcome the police. The rise of polarisation, misinformation and strongman leaders creating a perfect storm and the perfect platform for a prime ministerial podcast. I'm Malcolm Turnbull, former Prime Minister of Australia, and I'm concerned democracy is under more threat than ever. Malcolm Turnbull interviewing defenders of democracy from current MPs to former world leaders in his new podcast, Defending Democracy. So can liberal democracies prevail against populist authoritarians? Can facts prevail over conspiracy theories? Join me on this podcast series as we start to map a road out of the chaos. Former PM turned podcaster Malcolm Turnbull joins us now. Uh, Malcolm, this is six episodes and six big guests from around the world. Have you fixed democracy yet? <laughs> well, we're, we're working on it, working on it. The democracies are uh, under threat, uh, obviously, from dictators abroad but mostly uh, by populism, misinformation, craziness in, domestically. You know, the, look at the United States. Look at January 6, 2021. Look at all the lies that are being peddled and uh, what that means to the world's biggest democracy. And we face those threats here too. What sort of threats do you think we face here specifically? Well, it's, it's the same deal, you know, uh, highly partisan uh, media, uh, disinformation... Uh, you know, people that are, de that are determined to really undermine the way our democracy operates. Uh, you know, at the, at the last election, and this is one, one of the guests on the podcast, is Tom Rogers, the Australian Electoral Commissioner, uh, describes how the Electoral Commission had to, you know, really take decisive action to, to uh, contradict misinformation about how our voting system worked. I mean, there, there is a lot of craziness out there, Waleed, and, it's, uh, and, you know, you can dismiss it as being crazy and maybe that's a, one description, but it can lead to a real erosion of trust in democracy. And you saw on January 6, 21, with, you know, with that big lie claiming that Biden had stolen the election, pushed out relentlessly by Fox News, as we have seen, even though the owners and management knew it wasn't true. You see what happens there. You tell a whole lot of people their government's been stolen. Some of them are going to take action and kinetic action, and that's exactly what happened. So uh, how much blame would you say lies with things like media, social media, behaviour in that sphere, and how much lies with, for example, politicians who work in this area? I mean, the, the example you cite, that lie was started by a politician. Well, yes, but that's, it's all tied up. You see, it's, a, it's an ecosystem. So if you have big voices spreading lies to undermine the democracy, then you get the consequences of anger, division and ultimately insurrections. Malcolm, one of the biggest threats to global democracy right now is China. And there have been headlines this week suggesting we could be at war with the superpower within just three years. Are you buying that? Well, look, it is possible that there could be a war uh, in our region within three years or even less. I mean, if Xi Jinping decides that he is going to use force to bring Taiwan into the People's Republic of China, then there is very likely to be a war. It's very likely the United States will be drawn into it. And therefore, it would be very likely that we as an American ally would be drawn into it too. Now, you know, I'm, I'm not an alarmist, I'm a realist, but, you know, we have to recognise these are dangerous times in which we live. I mean, who would have thought three or four years ago that there would be a full-scale land war in Europe? And yet there is. Just on the back of that, Malcolm, if, if that happens and America are drawn in, is Australia ready if it comes to that? Well, not ready enough, uh, that's for sure. Uh, we, you know, we're not ready enough, but... but you know, we, we have to make sure that we have the uh, resources, the equipment that enables us to defend ourselves. Uh, you know, there have been some decisions taken recently by the Morrison government that I think set us back uh, dramatically. I mean, we'll get an announcement about the AUKUS submarines and that's the, the commitment has been made to that, but that is going to take us decades 
before we get new capabilities. So the reality is Australia's not going to start a war, OK? So the timing is not something that we can control and we have to be on guard. From conflict to allies, we couldn't help but feel a bit of deja vu when the UK government announced its new migration policy this week. Not sure if you saw it, but here's a little bit. It is this country and your government who should decide who comes here. We will decide who comes to this country and the circumstances in which they come. Do not hand over your life savings. Do not risk your life. Do not waste your money or risk your life. Because you will not be entitled to a life in the UK. Yeah. No one who attempts an illegal boat journey to Australia will ever be allowed to settle here. Stop the boats. To stop the boats. Malcolm, is imitation the sincerest form of flattery? Should we all just be really flattered right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, look, I, I suppose you could look at it that way, but, I mean, realistically, uh, it is a fundamental obligation of any government to be in control of its borders. Um, once the people feel that you've lost control of their borders, uh, the consequences can be very wide-ranging. So I just think it's a fundamental thing governments have to do. Now for the big question, because it's a big leap from Prime Minister to the far more prestigious role of podcaster. <laughs> um, oh, exactly, that's right. I want to know who your inspiration was, because I assume you listened to sort of the Joe Rogans, the Abby Chatfields. I'm a podcaster. Um, did you listen to anything I did as inspiration? <laughs> well, look, I'd have to, have to be honest and say I haven't, but I will definitely <laughs> do so. You're not really... I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you, it's a fair question, and I'll tell you who, I'll tell you who I do really really admire, <laughs> listen to Willie Dalrymple and Anita Arnon's podcast, Empire. They're on the Ottoman Empire at the moment. It is brilliant. I feel like you've been playing in a different pool. <laughs> Slightly different. I'll get on to Empire. Um, I've got some recommendations too. I'll send them through. Please do. Please do. I would love to see Malcolm Turnbull front a true crime podcast. Oh. Yes. Mm. Is that in your future? Well, I might. I think about it. I think about it. I think maybe Lucy Turnbull would be better at that because she is, she, she is a very keen viewer of uh, crime series on television. So I think she's always secretly wanted to be a, uh, an investigator or a sleuth of some kind. Well, Malcolm Turnbull, it's been great chatting with you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much.